You ever notice how every six months China declares it is having a Sputnik moment? Yeah, the same country that censors we need a pool now thinks it is launching satellites of innovation. Please, let me tell you what really happened with China's so-called AI miracle, Deep Sick. Spoiler: It is not. Sputnik. It's smoke and mirrors with a Beijing accent. In January this year, Chinese tech firm Deep Sick drops a new open source AI model. They brag it can mimic human reasoning, match or surpass U.S. models at just one twentieth at the cost. <clears throat> Overnight, the headlines screen. China has arrived. Markets freaked out. U.S. tech giants tied to AI, Microsoft, Nvidia, Oracle, Google, they lost nearly one trillion dollars in market value. Nvidia alone got slaughtered, down twenty percent, wiping out six hundred billions the next day. Commentators even whispered. Is this the new Sputnik moment? Well, let's pause. Sputnik was 1957. The Soviets lobbed a beeping ball into space, and the world panicked. America responded by revamping education and doubling down on science. Result: the U.S. leapfrogged the Soviets and owned the digital revolution. By 1990. Gorbachev stood in Silicon Valley, admitting all the concepts of the future are being born in California. His general had already said it bluntly: "The Cold War is over. You won. Computers are the new tanks, and in America, even five-year-olds have them." So, what did Sputnik prove? That a flashy headline doesn't equal lasting power. In fact, Sputnik moment has become a negative phrase, an illusion that collapses, which makes it hilarious that Beijing is now bragging about their Sputnik moments. And collapse it did. Within days, U.S. Commerce Secretary torched the hype by revealing. That deep seek only looked cheap because it was powered by stolen U.S. tech. OpenAI confirmed their models were ripped off, and turns out deep seek had fifty thousand Nvidia chips, hardware that was supposedly export controlled, rerouted through Singapore. Jensen Huang chased a little side profit. And ended up feeding the beast. Regret came too late. And the cherry on top, users found DeepSeek was just Chinese state media in chatbot form. Ask about Cultural Revolution, Taiwan, or Xi Jinping, and it just spewed boilerplate CCP propaganda. The party always puts people at the center. The Chinese people can distinguish right and wrong, blah blah blah. Congratulations, China built an AI parrot that makes its foreign ministry spokesperson obsolete. And let's be clear, Deep Seek was never revolutionary to begin with. It's derivative, not original. Training your model on pirated open AI outputs isn't innovation; it's academic plagiarism at industrial scale. You don't get the Nobel Prize for copying somebody else's homework, even if you write it in Mandarin, and it is massively subsidized, not sustainable on free market. Deep Six, low cost. Miracle only exists because the Chinese state foots the bill, cheap labor, 
energy subsidies, and state-directed capital can make anything look cost-efficient for a quarter. But real innovation isn't measured in government subsidies. It's measured in whether the model can fund itself in the open market. And plus, it is still a black box, not a platform. The world's leading AI firms, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google DeepMind, they are building ecosystems, APIs, developer communities, spin-off startups. DeepSeek, a closed system that censors, filters, and bans any politically sensitive question. You can't build an equal system on top of a muzzle. At its core, it's a propaganda tool, not a productivity tool. Western AI is messy, sometimes too messy, but that chaos is where creativity happens. Deep sick, by design, narrows knowledge instead of expanding it. Imagine trying to write a research paper, design a product, or debate ideas using an AI that refuses to mention Tiananmen Square. That's not an assistant. That is a babysitter to the CCP party line. Remember Sputnik? The Soviets shocked the world for about five minutes, and then they stalled because they didn't have the equal system to sustain real innovation. Deep Seek is the same. A short-term stock market sugar rush, not a long-term game changer. The U.S. still controls the semiconductors, the foundational models, the research universities, the uh, open culture that fuels actual breakthroughs. And most importantly, the Chinese AI is not exportable. Innovation that matters spreads globally. The iPhone wasn't just for Americans. It reshaped the life in India and uh, South Africa. Who outside China will build their company on deep sick? Knowing that every inquiry is logged, censored, and monitored by Beijing. Nobody. A product that can't cross borders isn't a revolution. It's a trap. So let's call deep sick what it really is. A Franken model stitched together from stolen parts, plugged into banned chips, wrapped in propaganda, and sold as a revolution. At best, it's a short-lived headline. At worst, it's a reminder that China's system can imitate but can never innovate. But here's where the story gets interesting. Deep Sick wasn't just tax theater. It was the match for a financial bonfire. Within 10 days of its release, AI concept stocks across China surged. Over 150 companies in 15 industries suddenly rebranded themselves as part of the AI ecosystem. And returns soared more than 20% in just a few weeks. That's not innovation. That is narrative engineering. CCP's favorite export. And here's the kicker. It wasn't just tech startups chasing the hype. The state-owned enterprises in sectors like steel, shipping, even old-school energy companies that should be investing in their own industries all scrambled to slap an AI sticker on their PowerPoint. Why? Because in today's China, juicing your stock price through speculation is safer and more profitable than actually building something. Real investment carries risk, but speculation? 
that pays instantly. And the financial industry is no better. Brokerages, banks, and fund managers all pushing the AI concept. They push in this because they believe in the tech, not, not because they believe in the technology, but because they need retail money flowing in. Every pump means more commissions, more exits for insiders, and more opportunities to dump garbage assets into unsuspecting investors. Ordinary shareholders, the so-called jiu cai, chives, meant to be cut and harvested, they are once again footing the bill. Chinese investors, with their famously short memory spans, rushed in head first. I call it fast bull, slow bear. A few quarters of euphoria, followed by a decade of misery. Oh, and it's not just SOEs and listed dinosaurs playing dress up. Chinese startups are even more desperate. The hottest pitch in Beijing right now isn't, we build something useful. It's, we're the deep sick of logistics or the deep sick of healthcare. Just slap AI on your slide deck, sprinkle in a few screenshots of code, and suddenly venture capitalists and those state-linked funds line up with checks. Some of these firms don't even bother to hide it. They openly shift their business model on paper to chase subsidies. The same way everyone rushed into EVs five years ago. Remember that bubble? Factories making scooters, appliances, even fireworks suddenly claim they were new energy vehicle suppliers just to grab the government funding. Billions went up in smoke, and most of those so-called EV firms have vanished. And now it's the same playbook, just with AI. Subsidy hunting has become a business model. Real R&D takes years and costs money. But claiming you are part of the, eco, the deep sick ecosystem, that is an instant value, valuation growth, instant subsidies, instant investor hype. The result? A startup landscape distorted beyond recognition, where founders spend more time bragging themselves as AI-related than actually innovating. Once again, the only guaranteed outcome is that insiders get rich, while ordinary investors and taxpayers pay the price. Now, the deeper problem? AI can't fix what's broken. Confidence in China has collapsed. Consumer confidence, money supply, foreign investment are all in free fall. Deflation is entrenched. Shelves are full. Demand is dead, and consumer prices are being slashed. That is depression with Chinese characteristics. Property has imploded. Once the crown jewel, real estate is now radioactive. Combined with toxic stocks, it is a double crash. And that is, let's add one more, jobs. Every year, China speeds out nearly 12 million new college graduates. They studied engineering, business, law, and they're entering a job market that is a wasteland. Can AI absorb them? No chance. AI in China isn't creating broad employment. It's replacing routine, white-collar tasks, squeezing margins and funneling whatever value remaining to a handful of state-favored firms. So what happens? You get a generation of full-time children and lying-flat youth, 
educated, jobless, and demoralized. And the AI hype might move stock prices, but it doesn't move the unemployment line. And even AI revolution leaves tens of millions of grads with no work. That's not a revolution. That is a social time bomb. So Beijing manufactures good assets by hype. Today it's deep sick. Tomorrow, who knows? Maybe Baijiu, the Chinese liquor, semiconductors, EVs, rockets. They've all had their turn already. None changed the fundamentals. And here's the blunt, blunt truth: China is a periphery state in the global system. Real breakthroughs are born in the core. The U.S., the places with freedom to fail and freedom to dream. In the periphery, what you get is diffusion, borrowed tech, dressed up as original, and spun into a financial bubble. And this isn't just my opinion; it's backed by history. Stanford historian Ian Morris, in his book *The Measure of Civilization*, showed that no society in human history has ever jumped straight from hunting and gathering into modern industry. Every society that modernized did so by absorbing. The advances of a more developed empire. The industrial age didn't、uh, spread evenly like sunlight. It spread like a、uh, fungus, center first and then outward. And that's why the 20th century world converged on Western technology. Once Europe crossed the fossil fuel threshold. Modernization everywhere else became inevitable, but inevitable doesn't mean equal. The core invents and the periphery copies. The U.S. produces the chips, the internet, the iPhone. China mass produces them cheaper and more efficiently, but never from zero. So when Beijing shouts overtaking the West, it's not destiny. It's pure marketing, and the moment Washington cuts the cord, bans chips, lock those model access, slap tariffs, the periphery stalls, the diffusion ends, and what's left isn't revolution; it's a bubble waiting to pop. So let's call deep seek what it really is: not a Sputnik moment, but a scam moment. A propaganda tool wrapped in stolen code, hyped into a financial frenzy, while the real economy sinks deeper into deflation and despair. China doesn't have an AI revolution; it has an AI bubble, and like every bubble before it, it will end the same way, with silence, regret, and a lot of. Fast bulls burned alive in a very, very long bear market.